What drew you to the course? Well, I was interested in doing art because I'd never really done much before. So that was my initial interest. Was that. And then, yeah, mentalising was quite intriguing when I started to learn a bit more about it. And I think it's good to relate to people and to try and understand your own, your own head, your own mind a bit better. Probably because of my Asperger's, I find it difficult, like, knowing what other people are thinking or trying to be aware that other people have different thoughts and stuff like that. Mm. And, and art. I like art. It's to do with expression. I'd like to kind of broaden my horizons on that front. Mm. And I thought it might help. And his art as well, of course. Tell us what drew you to this first image. It's because I think it's one where I actually said something about my feelings and the way I am at the moment. Mm. It was an exercise where you do an onion, where the layers are what you're feeling. And I did mine in chains because I have a lot of difficulty doing things and mm. controlling my own life. Even though I'm an atheist, I got angry at God at one point because I felt my free will had been interfered with. The layers are feelings, so the outside one is a happy yellow because generally I think I come across as quite happy now and on the service I am. And then it moves inwards, so there's still some depression and fear in the background, but just far milder than they used to be, but still under the service. Mm. This one, uh, it's a little bit sinister, I suppose. Yeah, it reminds me of uh, hallucinations I used to get, which are often quite scary and mm -hmm. kind of demonic stuff. And I, I didn't really plan on doing it. It just kind of came out, you know, like shadowy figures and stuff like that. So something that's kind of distressing, but mm. it's quite personal as well. So you kind of find yourself relating to these images and you get attached to them in some way. You know, so. uh -huh. I had had physio the day before and we were talking about the brain and we were talking about like the different brain bits, the cerebellum and the limbic system and the motor system. Yeah, and the cerebral yeah. cortex, that's yeah. it. Yeah. What um, do you remember about making it? I just remember thinking how hot my physio is <laughs> and how he always manages to cheer me up. Even though I'm happy, there's always a background of misery, so that's why there's the darker spots in it. Uh -huh. Yeah. I enjoy a good fire, so quite a nice picture to draw. And it was, it was, it was enjoyable. Mm. It's with uh, chalk pastels, I think. I think it was after after looking at the pictures that we saw in the Hobble Museum. Mm. And I picked out a picture that was some woodcutters bundling wood together or something, so I thought this kind of relates to that a bit. The flames are kind of scattering up into the sky like they do on a fire. Detached flames in, kind of fade out as they go up. Ah, yes, yes. Well, this one is probably one of the more explicit ones where I actually kind of had a point in mind, which mm. is just about sort of society and how it can feel. Maybe like I've got a certain social group in mind and it's yeah about everyone having a mask and you know the mask all, all in here have got different details like everyone's mask is kind of personal and tailor-made but essentially we're not showing who we really are. You're always giving away a certain amount about yourself through your body language or stuff like that. Yes. But then we still have our masks and we still try and keep ourselves guarded from each other. And mm. Something I think about often, meeting lots of people, is to work in bars and stuff where you meet loads of people but you don't get to know lots of people very well. Mm. So yeah. It's a culmination of two pictures that I saw on postcards. One was an abstract piece which I used as the background and the other one was just a, a form, a figure. I was quite happy with how it came out to be honest. What drew you to this one? Again, it's because I think it's one where I said something useful about mm. myself and the way I think my mind works when I'm psychotic. This bit, the... what's it called? That bit? The brainstem Cere and the cerebellum. Mm. Yeah, it's just sort of, it's got the orangey lines on it to show that it's just sort of a bit alert mm. and ready to run or hide or fight or whatever. And then the limbic system is all in red, because I associate red with fear. Mm. And so that's just lighting up with fear all the time. And then we've got the um, cerebral cortex, 
which is all stormy and cut up and lightning going because nothing's really making sense and you can't really work out what's happening and it's all a bit chaotic. You don't, can't really work out what's going on. Mm. So that's the part of the brain in which you want to work things yeah, out. Yeah, in it? which you should be thinking clearly but can't think clearly, can't work out what's happening, can't act in a way that's appropriate to what's happening because you don't know what's happening. Mm. You're just very confused. That was from, I think, the first session where we were talking about onion skins and how everyone has like different layers and I ended up doing like what people see on the outside and what's really going on in the inside and how it's very different and usually the inside is quite miserable mm. but recently the inside has not been so miserable. So if I did that onion skin now, it would be slightly different. Which bit of the course has made the most sense to you so far? Can I say it's all made sense? Yeah. I think the bit that stands out for me is was the attachment styles mm -hmm. and thinking about them because that does resonate with me a bit in understanding my own attachment, which I think is heavily influenced by my Asperger's. Compassionate mind and trying to have yeah. positive, positive things going through your head to not getting into emotional distress or negativity and those kind of things that can really drag you down mm. and yeah, I think mentalising is a good way of trying to get your own thoughts in order and also kind of attachments and how, how you relate to different people and notice a lot more how my family is kind of when they're having problems or arguing or stuff and you, yeah and you kind of try and relate a bit more and be a bit more compassionate to people. And um, what's been difficult? The difficult part has been not oversharing, not saying too much that might distress other people. Yeah, it's, it's trying to translate things into art and I've just, okay. yeah, lots of implicit things. So most of the things I've done have just been a kind of bit of a mess. And yeah, trying to actually kind of get your thoughts down on, on paper. I think it's just staying focused during it. Compared to the art therapy I had before, there's a lot more talking and education. And sometimes it can be hard to pay attention for periods of time. I think I find mentalising difficult. Maybe express myself as well as I could, or would like to be able to. Quite often i found there's not very many ideas that I've been able to find within myself. Maybe that's why I find it hard to express the ideas, because there isn't many of them. Do you think mentalising is beginning to make sense, even though it's difficult? I'm not sure if I've got a grasp on it yet, mm. uh, honestly. I think it be, can be quite simple, but it can also be quite complicated. So I might have got, a, I might have got a, the idea of it. That's what I think. I think so, yeah. I think mentalising is basically understanding your own mind and the minds of others and the relationships between you and others. Yeah, I guess. Like, trying to just remember that people don't know what you're thinking and you don't know what they're thinking, so you've got to always be like in an unknowing position and try and find out what's going on rather than jump to conclusions. And do you have any thoughts about how mentalising could help you understand yourself? Well, it's probably the right platform to try, try and understand myself a bit better. Often I find I'm a little bit blank-minded and you know, just floating around a little mm. bit. So it's not often that I can really get my head together and but uh, it helps for dealing with kind of anxiety and stuff like that. If, you f if I find myself in a bad headspace, then then I can you know, sort of use mentalising to try and get that under control, I guess. Mm -hmm. and just to get yeah, a bit more distance from mm -hmm. my troubles, I guess. I think it's, yeah, it's kind of given me like a more underlying awareness of what's going on with people close mm -hmm. to me. Right. Yeah, still try and put it into yeah, practical use more. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not usually that in touch with my feelings until after the fact, so I'll usually, there'll be an incident. I won't know it's distressed me till afterwards, I guess. With mentalising, it would be then trying to work out if there was a scenario that day which could distress me mm. or work it out earlier before I go into a big hole. I think it helps if you're talking about it and you're doing artwork to show it. When you can look at that 
I think how well does that reflect what's going on? Is that a good way to explain it? When we do specific exercises often, I think that's helpful. So have you had any thoughts about how mentalising could help you communicate well with friends and family? Yeah, I guess, like with my mum and being more aware of my boundaries with other people as well. Not really, but I've implemented. I suppose it just means you should think a bit more and try to jump to fewer conclusions. Mm. And does it help you see yourself and other people from different perspectives? Or can you imagine that it might do? Yeah, and again, just like that they can't read minds. Um... Yeah, I think if I had more time to practice, it would be helpful. I think I might have problems understanding other people because of the Asperger's again. I'm a paranoia. That can interfere with understanding other people's motives. Sure. Yeah, when I get paranoid, I become suspicious of everyone. Mm. Everyone's in their own mind. Very complicated. Yep. So, who knows what, mm. yeah, what's going on. That's what mentalising there for, because it helps us understand what's going on.